What do I think is the archetypal significance of the popularity of the anti-hero in American television? Oh, well, that's, that's easy. I mean, the, the anti-hero, Nietzsche, Nietzsche made the proposition that he said that morality is cowardice. Now, that's not exactly what he said. What he, or what he said in a more elaborated form is that very frequently people are afraid to do things and they're often things that other people regard as bad and because they don't want to admit to themselves that the reason they won't do those things that are regarded as bad is because they're cowardly, they pretend that it's because they're moral. And so often conventional morality is a consequence of conventional cowardice. And the problem with conventional cowardice is that it's not sufficient to solve serious problems. And so, for example, it's necessary for a man, and perhaps for a woman as well, to become a bit of a monster, or even a lot of a monster, in order to move through life successfully. And that doesn't mean precisely that you have to act out being a monster, but it means that you need to be able to be a monster when the circumstances demand it. And so the reason that anti-heroes like Walter White, for example, are so popular in American culture is because the criminal Walter White was by no obvious, was in no obvious way less moral than the conventional and cowardly Walter White. Now, you might say he went from one extreme to another, which he did. But it's also the case that in order to expand past the domains of conventional morality slash cowardice from the Nietzschean perspective, it's necessary to incorporate elements of the shadow. And that's in some sense what Nietzsche meant when he said that we need to go beyond good and evil. And it's certainly what Jung meant when he said that it's necessary for someone who wants to burst forth from the potentially pathological confines of their conventional persona into the the journey towards individuation and and the development of the self was that the, the shadow had to be incorporated and that means often in part the capacity for aggression uh, the capacity for sexual expression the capacity to divide defy convention the capacity to take your own road that's all predicated on the development of an inner relationship with the monster and it's the same idea that's expressed in Harry Potter Harry Potter is actually able to combat Voldemort, who's essentially Satan for all intents and purposes, because he has a piece of evil lodged firmly within him. And it's also what makes him a, a redeeming rule breaker. Right? So so the anti-hero is the shadow, roughly speaking. And the shadow is the thing that the persona needs to incorporate to become the hero.